the Small Cap Power CEO interview. Can you tell our viewers a little about your company? I'm most pleased to do so. Replicell is a life science company in the regenerative medicine business listed on the Toronto Venture Exchange with the symbol RP and we're in the business of developing autologous cell therapies for the treatment of active cellular deficits in various conditions such as chronic tendinosis or sun damaged skin which is all the result of either injury, aging, or pre genetic predisposition. What are the various products the company is developing? The lead product candidate is for the treatment of chronic tendinosis, which is a, a significant unmet medical need and is sort of the stage of injury that is past a tendinosis stage where a patient doesn't resolve uh, through traditional physiotherapy means. In this case, we are isolating the, the fibroblasts from the hair follicle and directly replicating them and directly putting them in under imaging, ultrasonic imaging, into the area of injury to jumpstart the healing process. And in phase one clinical trials, we were very successful. The fibroblast is a complete platform, so we are moving into a secondary indication in the fibroblast therapy, which relates to sun damage and aging skin. And then a third platform is, or third indication is RCH01, which is the treatment of pattern baldness. And then the company has an underlying um, manufacturing, innovative manufacturing technology that supports the production and the replication of those cells. And finally, each of those indications needs a specific delivery device. And in the case of our dermal delivery device, we've created something that it can be used in other uh, dermal products, which includes a, a pelche element which freezes the skin and obviates the need for uh, any lidocaine or, or uh, anesthetic injection. Biotech companies create value by continuously advancing products through phases of clinical trials. Can you walk our viewers through this process? Our lead product is RCT01, which is the fibroblast-based product for treating chronic tendinosis, which will begin clinical trials this year. And that's followed on the same fibroblast platform by RCS01, which is our derm-related and damaged skin-related uh, program, which will start a phase one trial this year with data in 2015. And then that is followed by RCH01, which is our uh, treatment for pattern baldness going into a phase two in Europe with data out in 2016. And supporting that is the, um, the novel injector device being used for the derm as well as for the scalp. What is the market size for your various treatments? Uh, each, each of these indications are billion dollar plus um, indications. Um, for example, take uh, chronic tendinosis. 15% uh, of, of military recruits don't get through boot camp because of patellar tendinosis, which is jumper's knee. Four to seven people in a thousand people suffer from lateral epicondylitis, which is otherwise known as, as tennis elbow. There are significant um, long-term disability and even short-term disability uh, issues for um, workman's compensation boards, etc., trying to get people back to work who have chronic tendinosis. And of course, the derm market is a multi billion dollar uh, market. Um, just look at the success of Botox and dermal fillers, hyaluronic acid dermal fillers. And of course, pattern baldness, as we all know, if you are able, long term, we're able to resolve that issue, which is really just addressing a cellular deficit, um, that is a massive market. Are you planning to partner with anyone or license your technology? We've already begun licensing our technology. We've licensed RCH01, the treatment for pattern baldness, to Shiseido Corporation in Japan and for a geographic license uh, only to that technology for China, Japan, and the ASEAN countries. Shiseido will be, be, begin in parallel doing their own clinical trial in addition to our own in, clinical trial in the West. The programs on the fibroblast side, we will start to initiate discussions in order to try and either do geographic licenses or worldwide licenses for these technologies. What are the key risks and challenges facing the company? There's always funding risk, although I'm comfortable that in this uh, particular funding cycle that, that our clinical programs and our fundraising needs are aligned with the current marketplace that is quite um, attracted to biotech at, at, at this point in time. 
And similarly, I guess the other, the other side is execution risk, and we're quite comfor comfortable in, in the execution risk of our programs. One of the things that needs to be mentioned is that we have an inherent safety um, uh, benefit in the sense that this is your pa a patient's own cells, and those cells um, aren't those cells do not have the adverse events or the adverse reactions that you might otherwise have with a, a new chemical entity like a drug or something like that. So it, it's inherently safer treatment than normal bio, you know, drugs or biologics. What are the major investment catalysts for the company in the next 12 months? Those are pretty clear. They're clinical, the start of clinical trials and clinical evidence being um, delivered next year and of course um, potential licensing. Thank you for taking the time for the interview, David. Most welcome. Thank you. Keep up to date with all your favorite small caps. Subscribe to our free daily newsletter featuring investment ideas, breakout stocks, analyst research, and more. Smallcappower.com. Investing ideas and research.